Sit back, relax, while I tell you a story. Okay, so today's post is about story, but I will be talking about equipment, and I'll be telling you about the new challenge, which this time is going to last for a week, so you'll have a bit longer to really go for it. Okay, so what is it about story that's important, and what does that have to do with equipment? Well, as filmmakers, we're always being told that story is absolutely vital, and the same goes for things like blogging as well. When I look up how to blog and so forth, because I like to research what I do, lots of people say tell a story. They also say make it look nice, but... I'll work on that soon. But this is also the case for games design, even 3D scenes, and even down to your models. This is something I often forget about, especially when I'm doing 3D. Often when I'm making a model, I'm thinking very technically. Is this good enough? Does it look realistic? Is my artwork good enough? What are the best techniques? And so forth. But what I often forget is the details about character and story. So take my recent elephant model. It looks fine as an elephant, but it's got no character. Maybe the fact that it's got one broken tusk suggests some sort of character. I wanted to put armor on it eventually, but I'll probably go back to that later on. What I should be doing is thinking about little details about that elephant's life, and then try and put them into the elephant as a character, as its history, maybe a scar across its eye, perhaps a broken chain around its neck where it's escaped. Those sort of things can add story to your character and make it more compelling. The same for 3D scenes. It was really wonderful to see so many posts of people's locations in the morning or the evening, and it was fascinating to see a bit of their story. I really got drawn into that competition and really got excited about it, and it spurred me on to do more of this sort of thing, definitely. Which brings me on to the next challenge. I want you to take what you've learned from that, even if you didn't take part in the competition, you can try this one, and we're going to make a low poly scene based on morning or evening light. So you make a low poly scene and you light it in three different ways, let's say. Maybe morning, evening and night time. I'm going to release a tutorial on how to do that and how to light scenes in the next few days. But what I want you to also add is some kind of story into that low poly scene. Some kind of history, maybe some kind of background, maybe a little character. Have a think about it, be inventive, and see what you can come up with. So what does that have to do with equipment? Well, I've talked about barriers in the past, and I want to go through what equipment I'm using for this blog to kind of say it's really not important. The first thing to say is the camera that I'm using here is a GoPro Hero 3. I think that came out in 2012 or 13, or something around there, so it's quite an old camera, and it's okay quality, it does a fine job, but there's so much better out there. I think you can probably pick these up for about 60 pounds in the UK at the moment. I've got one light up here, and that's the cheapest LED light I could find. It's a bit rubbish, to be honest, because a noisy fan comes on, and if you're filming any audio, that can be really distracting. For audio, I'm using this, which is the Zoom 5, or Zoom H5, and that cost me about £100 on eBay. I really like that. I think that does make a massive difference, your sound quality. So if you are thinking of doing filming stuff, then make sure you get good sound quality. And I don't think I can get that much better from my condenser mic that I use for my tutorials, which is somewhere around here. There we go. Can you see it? The other bit of kit that I use is a Canon. Oh, it's a 600D. I thought it was a 500D. I can't even remember what camera I'm using. It's quite old. Again, I got this about five years ago, and I was just getting into filming with DSLRs at that point and thought, wow, this is just amazing. But it's really not a great blogging camera because it hasn't got any autofocus functions. So if you're trying to film yourself, you're constantly going in and out of focus. I do often use a camera from school, actually, which is a bit better. It's a bit newer. It's a Panasonic G80, I think, something like that. And that's about £600 with a kit lens. Uh, This is probably about £150 now. So you can pick these things up fairly cheap. And you only need a small camera like this and a microphone to do some sort of filmmaking. The same goes for your artistic skill, in my opinion. Now, I've spent a fair bit of money and got a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. And that is pretty nice, I've got to say. And it does help a lot. But if I'm doing things in the classroom, I get out the £40 graphics tablet, the XP Pen, £50, £40, and draw things with that. And that's absolutely fine. You mustn't let these things get in the way. Yes, there will be some costs. And if you can't even afford that, then sculpting and painting may not be the avenues you can explore at the moment. So work on your low poly stuff. If you've got a really rubbish laptop, which often people say, which is fair enough, do what you can. Do low poly work, low poly environments, keep things really simple, but work on the artistic aspects of breaking down objects and making them in 3D in a stylized way. Don't let these things be a barrier to creativity. 
And that's why I'm coming back to the story. Things like the story, you can film a film on your mobile phone. It doesn't really cost anything to create a story as such. There was one point where I was getting really wound up by what kit I had and it wasn't good enough, do I need to spend more money? But I'm putting barriers in the way of my creativity and I'm putting barriers in the way of me getting on and doing things because I feel like, oh, I just can't do that. I've got to wait until I can get such and such. If your laptop really doesn't run Blender, then just stick to artwork and sketching. Get good at that and then when you can, get something that will run Blender. Then you can work on your 3D stuff. But keep being creative, keep learning those skills, and you'll improve, and you'll be in a better position when you get that sort of equipment. There's so many people out there that think because they've got the equipment, they can become a great photographer, great filmmaker, and I've seen them talking about their kit as if that's the answer. But when you look at their footage or their work, it's quite amateurish because they haven't looked at lighting, they haven't looked at shot construction, they haven't looked at story. That's what really grabs people. That's what people enjoy about art. And I know that I need to do this as well. And that's why I like doing this blog so much because it's reaffirming to myself the things that I should be doing. So think about story, take the challenge if you're able. A low poly landscape, think about lighting because you're gonna light it morning, evening and at night and think about a story in there. What can you have that's in low poly that will tell a story about this environment and make it really interesting and compelling? My most popular piece of work was probably by accident and I was working in the classroom with some students on a low poly landscape and it puzzled me as to why it was so successful but it's the story behind it. I created a fox in a winter scene and it was jumping to catch something in the snow and that's quite a nice story and it was purely by accident really I was building up the landscape and thought, oh, I remember seeing this thing on the BBC about a fox that jumped into the snow. And I thought I'll put that in as well. And suddenly there was a story there. And it makes me think I need to go back to that and get more stories in my scenes and artwork. So that's my challenge to you. All the details will be on the Discord server. And I'll pin a post on there about the details of the challenge. And I'll be releasing a tutorial about lighting your low poly scenes. So if you haven't already, get across to the Discord server. It's really nice to be a part of that community. And I'd love to chat with you. Thanks for watching.